one of the things that, that they'll do, and I think that that in in terms of that that point I was trying to make a minute ago about disseminating their consciousness, is use uh, propaganda and other people uh, as spokespeople, uh, making it more complicated for us to keep up. Um, so I had to go to archive dot today to get this story. That's why it looks like this, uh, because I do not have a subscription to the Financial Times. And apparently our uh, university access to that database no longer exists. Uh, we've over the years, last few years, lost some of our access, which is just disappointing. Uh, and Financial Times is one of them. So I had to go to archive.today to get the story uh, suggested to me, I think on Twitter, I forget who sent it, forgive me for that, by Taylor Nicole Rogers, for, uh, Nicole Rogers rather, a couple hours ago. And it's about the fact that, well, the, um, where is the title? It doesn't show up. The, yeah, the title doesn't even yeah. show up anyway. But it's about uh, black involvement in cryptocurrencies and the impact of the crash on black America, just extending even from my own discussion of this, this story. But just, just a, a little bit of an update. It says here, a quarter of Black American investors owned cryptocurrencies at the start of the year, compared with only 15% of white investors, which actually this aerial investments survey contradicts uh, the, the earlier reporting that it was 44% of Black investors compared to 11% of white. But anyway, uh, but many more black investors than white investors were involved in crypto and lost a lot of money uh, as as the overall crypto market went from uh, three point two trillion last year down to one trillion. Uh, you know, and black Americans had higher exposures, left them more vulnerable and lost a lot. Uh, but part of what this article is talking about is what attracted black people to to investing. Uh, and as they say here, it was amplified by marketing, uh, something I know I've been arguing and trying to cover as much as possible. Um, and they they referred to a couple of people uh, like this brother here who uh, had had th and it was just like we talked about through the cash app app. And it's easy invitation to invest in Bitcoin had at one point put in, I think, $10 and it went up to 70. And he went, he took that as a sign and then put in all of his $20,000 savings into it uh, and basically lost all of it. Um, and yet he's still buying crypto and trying to stay in the game. Uh, but, but the real point that I'm getting at is that not only specifically were are black people being encouraged through crypto ganda and marketing to, to, to invest uh, largely through people like Jatali Bellantan being giving a lot of space to talk about their endeavors to teach kids black capitalism and all this other kind of stuff. Um, uh, again, with the promise of of wealth building, but 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 um, this this part of the story is is where I think it gets most nuanced and complicated and most pernicious in terms of the dissemination of an elite consciousness to the rest of us. As a critic in this article of Black investors losing a lot of money in the cryptocurrency game is Nadja Roberts, who we've covered here extensively as the partner, uh, business partner, that is, uh, with Hill Harper and with Jay-Z and Jack Dorsey getting money to uh, uh, get having big white investment come in to invest and fund her and other endeavors to teach black people and invite black people into the crypto black blockchain space. She is now presented here as a critic of the, the of the marketing and the success rates in bringing black people in and 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 saying um uh, as she says, is quoted here, 98% of these cryptocurrencies were not designed to do anything other than extract money from people's bank accounts, said Naja Roberts, a former financial advisor and now founder of the Cryptocurrency Education Center Crypto Blockchain Plug, which I have talked about in, in as much detail as I think is known at this point. And my point in really just to bring it all back to where we start, where I intended to, to squeeze this in, is to say, 
this is in part a part of what makes it so difficult for black people writ large to assess what to do in response to problems everybody is clear exist. So here comes this woman presented as the critic who is literally one of the main reasons or part of the problem of bringing black people into that space and then more more largely promoting this idea that black capitalism is a solution as opposed to political mm -hmm. power. So, I mean, this is what I mean when I say I'm impressed at their ability to do this. Uh, um, and I'm impressed and I'm, and I'm, you know, again, why I'm not angry, albeit sometimes frustrated when people don't get it, um, that I've had to personally work at, for years with an intended focus without, you know, uh, uh, on the, um, built on some political education to expect people just to come to the to the correct political conclusions is almost imp impossible i think uh, so anyway I